Greetings one and all, Strategic Sage here, thanks for joining me. If you're interested in the Zenith Onslaught expansion for AI War 2, launches for everybody next Tuesday. And that's what we're going to be talking about here, overview of the features that come with it. And then we'll dive in a little bit more on the factions, talk about some of the other features in future videos. But before I get to that, I do want to be fully ethical and have full disclosure. So I do have a couple of elements of my relationship with Arkham Games that I need to put out there. The first item is I did get a free copy of the Zenith Onslaught expansion for being an insider, doing some testing and feedback. I was also honored to have the opportunity to be the primary person, although I did get some help with it, working on the trailer for the Zenith Onslaught expansion. I'll have a link to that in the description below when it's out. It's actually not going to be out quite yet by the time this video is uploaded. Those two elements are the full extent of it, though. This is not a paid promotion. Arkin has never paid me for videos that I have done or plan to do. I don't get a commission on anything they sell, I'm not an Arkin employee, etc. So with that out of the way, let's dive in and take a look at Zenith Onslaught. So major features, obviously we're going to start with the factions today. There's four of them, technically five, but one of them sort of in two flavors. The Dark Zenith are the highlight one, and you get the regular Dark Zenith or the Dark Zenith Vicari. We'll see, see what the difference is there, but that's sort of the two in one. Then there is also the Zenith Architrave. Now, both of those are original factions. And there's two more that are sort of updates or imports from AI War Classic. The Nomad Planets faction, and also the Zenith Miner. There are also ten new AI types. Now, it's not quite as many if you don't have the Spire Rises, the first DLC, because a couple of those AI types will use units from the factions in the Spire Rises. So if you don't have those, you don't get those AI types, but you still get most of the ten. There are 11 new outguards as well with varying costs, although there's another situation where technically it's 10 because one of them allows you to call in the Zenith Trader at will, and the Zenith Trader isn't new, but it's new that it can be used as an outguard. There's also quite a bit in the way of new player units and assets. Cruisers and destroyers are available, and essentially those are sort of like arcs that you can build as a player. To hack them, you got to pay some hacking and some AIP, much like you have to do for hacking the FRS right now. There are new golems, there are a few new frigates, a few new strike craft. A significant focus area is in giving you more items for your planetary defense. Much like how the first expansion gave a bunch of new turrets, you get a lot more defensive structures now that are not turrets. There are more mine types, there are different hangar bays that you can throw drones out at the enemy, there's more things than that too, we'll get into all of that. There are a few more of what they call nasty picks, meaning defensive structures that the AI places on its planets to make your life a little bit more difficult. There's a new extreme and chaotic galaxy setting known as the Nomad Galaxy. The AI now has access to wormhole bores, which do pretty much exactly as they sound. And there are a couple of new map types as well. And that's basically the short version. I will have the link in the description below to, you know, all of the information that Arkin has put out about the expansion. Dark Zenith are definitely the most fearsome faction that's been added and arguably the most fearsome in the game now that they're around. And they will do, it's not just an extra galactic invasion, it's actually an invasion from another universe. They will create this group of planets and you see the invasion counter that comes up. And then after this goes down, they will attack the galaxy. Now when this starts is up to you. I have it set for immediate invasion here so that we can see what's going on right away. But they also can be timed to be a few different periods later in the game, or you can do it with a beacon so that you activate it when you want it, which is what I recommend if you're first learning how to deal with them. And uh, they're scary. Now, you can imagine, if you have the technology to invade from another universe, then you've probably got some really exotic abilities. And if we look at what they have going on, first of all, it's a much darker environment you can see the planet here they also have another type and some of the graphics are going to be changing over time as they add more and more things to it the art is not complete at the time that i'm recording this that's true for multiple factions here but if we look at the huskarl uh, electrotoxic hull is worth noting that basically just returns some of the damage they get hit it gets reflected back to the opponent then combine that with the attractant field any short-range shots fired will be aimed towards that. And then, again, it's reflecting some of that back, so very dangerous. And the Dark Zenith ships, they get a lot of fleet power, but they also tend to punch above their weight because of some of the abilities they have. That's part of the reason why they are so very dangerous. 
So we've got damage amplification here on the Drago, which is very similar to, like, for example, acid turrets. Um, now, some of their buildings, take a look at those. The Epistyle here, this is their production facility. And then these Terminus ones, such as over here, this is sort of their economic engine where they gather resources. And for a period of time until they've expanded to a degree, they will get extra resources, basically simulating the idea of additional structures and ships and all that coming in from their own universe. But at a certain point, they will not have that happen anymore, and they will start relying on their terminus to fuel their economy. So those will definitely be important targets. You can see the Scald here also has a solo phase ability. Phasing is a new aspect that we're going to see in the expansion. And essentially, this just knocks ships out of combat. Think of it as being relatively similar to paralysis, for example. And it only works on small strike craft. But it's still, you know, it's very effective crowd control ability. And then you can see the various other options. We've got, you know, this one has paralyzer and knockback, the at gear. I'm not sure how you would pronounce that. Trelleborg has chain lightning, which is one of the new cool weapons that's available. And they've got transports and harvesters and so on. Jumping ahead then to when their timers run out and they've actually begun to invade. They are now starting to head into Bear here, this Mark V planet. Let's see how the AI fares against them. Dark Zenith have claimed a planet. And you can see they're basically just running over this place. And they would not be quite this relatively powerful. Like if we did a later invasion, the AI would have a chance to build up more and they would resist them more. But at the beginning, the Dark Zenith are coming. That's pretty much how it's going to work. And you can see this is only an average intensity Dark Zenith. This is not a high level. It's intensity 5. Do you see they have ships anywhere from Mark 1 to Mark 6? And they would definitely have more higher Mark ships if they had been raised to a higher intensity. So they are very, very scary indeed. Now you might think as a player, well, okay, I'm just going to ignore them then, and I'm just going to bypass that and just go after and attack the AI. Well, that's not really going to work out too well for you. It'd be kind of pointless to add them on if you're not going to interact with them anyway. But if you look at the AI, they have Zenith Dragons, which they produce in reaction to the Dark Zenith Invasion. And this is very similar if you've played the Spire faction, the Fallen Spire faction, to the dragons they produce in that particular case to deal with the Fallen Spire. But they're powerful, they're defensive. You can see the 20 million health, about 80 strength. They've got Chain Lightning as well. And it makes it much harder for you to just go through and snipe the AI homeworld. Over here, in our system, we also, and they've begun to expand a bit, but initially... You only get the one Terminus. These are the Sfikari Dark Zenith, which, again, are basically pirates. They're rebels against the main Dark Zenith faction, a small offshoot. So they start smaller, but give them enough time and gradually build them up, and they can become quite powerful and help you out quite a bit. So in that sense, in a limited way, they're similar to having allied Scourge or whatever. So... What benefit do you get from the Dark Zenith? Well, there's a few things that can happen. One is you see this little, you know, blue bit around these planets. That's what's known as Fimble Winter. And the Dark Zenith will try to turn these planets throughout the galaxy. They will convert them with this Fimble Winter effect. And that gives them and their allies faster move speed and slows down any enemies that are on that planet. And in particular, allies of the Dark Zenith tend to be, they have a natural alliance called the Dark Alliance that will normally form with Dark Spire, if they have in the game. So if you want extra spicy Dark Zenith, you want to throw on Dark Spire to go play along with them. And interesting things can happen there. But all of these planets, if you were to capture the Dark Zenith planets, you will not pay AI progress for them. So that's a benefit. You can get extra science from them, you can hack Dark Zenith ship lines. So there's a number of things that will potentially benefit you if you can go after them. And so the idea is that you're encouraged to go after the Dark Zenith planets 
defeat them, at least to a degree, and then have enough extra power without corresponding AI progress increase to then go after the AI homeworld and be able to deal with the dragons. And the whole balance of that will definitely be in flux as, you know, people get experienced with it and try different things. But that's the goal. And then this is the big bad unit, if you will, of the Dark Seed, the Jormagander. And you can see the strength level. You know, if you've played against the Scourge and seen the Nemesis, this is probably even stronger than that. You can see the, you know, the DPS as high as 1.2 million. I mean, that's just ridiculous. It says this golem seems to be dormant. Now, notice you do also get science for killing this. It will regenerate itself over time. But it talks about this in the tooltip description here. But the basic idea is these will patrol the Dark Zenith homeworlds, you know, this group of five that they begin with. And if an enemy attack comes in here, which the AI will send, you know, exo waves and golems and all kinds of other fun things at them to try to fight them off, then it ticks off the Jormagander and it'll go rampage until it needs to come back and repair. But if you knock this out, it has a very obviously strong effect on then allowing you to more easily attack them. Not easily, but maybe less difficulty, you might say. The other big new and original faction is the Zenith Architrave. And they're more small territorial type, meaning they're not trying to take over the whole galaxy. They want their piece of it, they want their slice of the pie, and then they will fiercely defend it. Now, if you have multiple Architraves, such as I have in this game, three of them, then they can, if you have the option set up for them to do it, go into a state of civil war. What will happen in civil war is once they feel that one of the other architraves is getting too big for its britches, getting large enough to be too dangerous, they will send attacks at them. And it does not matter what's in between. It's very possible to get caught in a very dangerous crossfire. So you have to be kind of careful if civil war is on. Like even if you take a planet like this that you think is safe, well if these two architraves start fighting, you are going to get a bunch of crossfire here, and they're not going to be necessarily attacking you per se, but it's still not going to be very safe to be hanging around in the middle of all of that. Now, if you try to take territory that the Architrave has, like let's say we wanted to take this Zenith Matter Converter is a good example of something we might want to occupy. Well, that's a really bad idea, because we will get fiercely attacked by the Architrave, basically taking planets that are within their territory and trying to hang on to them is just not viable. It costs you way too much to try to defend it that you would be able to really accomplish. But it would be possible, of course, to just run in and grab something like, say we wanted to do this hack or maybe grab this arc or whatever in this Architrave's territory. You might be able to get away with, depending on how long you plan on being there, just grabbing it and getting out and abandoning the planet. Staying there permanently, not going to work. Now, here's what their home planets look like. You can see it's very spiked. We've got these lower areas where you're going to have the cities, I presume. And then there's a variety of hacks that you can do with them. The Quies one here, you can see this prevents them from going into being a warlike approach. And you might want to do this. Like if you wanted to, you could do the Quies hack and then try to grab some of these in their territory and then get out. But if you hack them, they will get very mad at you. You can take ship lines from them. And there are, in fact, more that are being added, even as I record this, to the possibilities of hacking the architrave. You can enforce a truce, etc. Now, they do, again, have some exotic abilities. This is one of their units they'll use for attack, the Hoplomachus. In any case, it has Paralyzer, it's got torpedoes. You can see it's pretty strong. It's got, you know, 1 million hull and almost as that much in shields. The portal here is their main structure that you'll see on their home worlds. And, you know, this is one of the areas you can hack directly. It also attritions anything that's around. It has pretty powerful beam array weapons. So it's pretty scary. I mean, look at the max DPS on that. It's absolutely insane. They have mirrored tractor rays, and a lot of their defensive structures, really, in particular, have some impressive abilities. These will reflect shots back at you. And then, for example, like the Navalia, these turret-type structures they have have what's known as multi-phase, if you look at the last line there in the description. 
And what multi-phase does is they'll be in normal space for 20 seconds and everything will be fine. And then for 20 seconds, they'll be in multi-phase, which means you can't attack them. They're basically not there in terms of as far as you can do any interaction. And then you, another 20 seconds, you'll be able to fire at them again. And so that makes them very difficult to attack in a normal fashion. And I'm, I have to admit, I'm sort of biased against this sort of space-time manipulation mechanic. But I'm going to wait and see how it plays out. It's a little bit too early before, you know, the expansion really gets its feet under it to pass judgment on that. But we'll see what happens there. Then if we look at Bacchus, this has some additional things that we can see. We have the Castra. And this is another defensive structure. And you can see that if you knock out the caster and the phase caster, which results from that, you can get science and hacking. So that's another way of taking advantage of, you know, benefiting from interacting with the architrave. But again, they have the various defensive structures that are multi-phase. Stativa is another one. They've got a gravity generator that's multi-phase. So they have a variety of of unique ships for you to interact with and enjoy getting killed by. One of the classic factions now being adapted to AI War 2 is the Zenith Miners. And there's basically two phases of this. There's a probe, then you have a period of time to deal with it based on the intensity of the faction. And then if you sort of let it run its course, then a Zenith Miner Golem will show up and will either eat the planet entirely or it will just ravage it. And we'll see that in a bit. So, if you don't want that to happen, then you have a variety of options here. You can't destroy the probes militarily. Notice it says immune to all damage. And they're right over here. But what you can do is hack to destroy it, and that will simply stop that whole process from happening on this planet. No golem will come. You can reroute it to an adjacent planet. You can reprogram it to do something else. In this case, it says faster ships, so we would have reduced gravity on this planet. Or you can turn this planet into a nomad, which we'll get to what nomads are a little bit later. So then if you just let the golem come, and you don't do anything to try to stop it or alter it, then this is an example of what happens if it eats the planet. This one here on Verendal. It just simply disappears. The planet ceases to exist. It is gone. Now... Here's one on Daring, where they're not going to do that, they're actually going to plan on ravaging it. And you can also see, as this miner goes around, and pretty much all of the miner graphics are not in their final state. There's some cool effects that are going to be coming in that I don't have at the time of recording, just a reminder of this. But you can see the, the power of this thing. I mean, the DPS is potentially insane. It has, you know, 20 million health, etc. Now, you can kill these... But uh, you need more than a pea shooter to do it. And you can see also you get a reward there for 300 science and 20 hacking points if you do that. But now it's settled in place. And it's going to ravage the planet. And we're going to see what that does. Boom. Okay. And now it disappears after it's done that. Basically sacrifices itself. A lot of the resources are gone, but it does leave the planet intact and the capturables remain. And they're not lost permanently. And it's purely random whether it decides to ravage or eat the planet. And of course, eventually, another one will come in. So, definitely with the Zenith Miner, you want to be very much aware of as much of the galaxy as possible and be able to move around the galaxy quickly to deal with it when they show up. And then there are the Nomad Planets also making a return. And they're kind of like what they sound like. They actually physically move around the galaxy. You can have up to 10 of them, depending on how you have it set. You can see the shifting there. It formed a new wormhole up here to actually another Nomad. I happen to have five on this particular setup. And they'll gradually move around. And this can create quite a chaotic situation. Because you're actually not sure what's going on. Like, you can't set up defenses in permanent places on wormholes and expect them to be actually functional in the long term because those planets will just shift and then a new wormhole will connect or one will be eliminated and it just 
it's a little bit of a chaotic situation. Obviously, the more nomad planets you have, the more that is. But the other thing that happens is they have these structures, the disabled nomad structure on the planets. And you can deactivate it, which will just turn this into a normal planet if you just don't want it hopping around. But you have to pay some hacking to do that. Or you can activate it, which gives you some other choices. One of which is to send this nomad planet crashing into another planet. And this is very much an alternate way of winning because what one of the things that, of course, people have traditionally done with this is to crash it into the AI homeworld and literally win that direction because everything on the AI homeworld will be destroyed. But if you use that option to reroute this planet into crashing into another one, the AI will react violently, both against your homeworld and against the Nomad itself. And you have to survive those exo attacks for however long it takes to get to the home world and plow it in there. So it is not a it's not an easy win button, although the balance I'm sure will be tweaked quite a bit. But that can be indeed a very explosive result. So that is the four factions that are coming new to the Zenith Onslaught DLC. And next video we'll be talking about some AI types and we'll continue to get into more of the feature set. Please let me know any questions you have about the factions down in the comments below, what you think of them. And as always, we will proceed with addressing those as time permits. Thanks for watching.